This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design this colorful circle-shaped infographic using Inkscape. And I will put a link in the description to where you can download a vector copy of this design in case you'd rather just grab a copy of it instead of following along and creating it with Inkscape. So. Um, I'll go ahead and get started here with Inkscape, by the way, if you'd like to know how you could update Inks, uh, Inkscape's appearance with this dark theme and these new icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video as well. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our document. So we'll go to File, Document Properties, Let me try that again, Document Properties. I want to set the display units to pixels, and I want to turn off the visibility of the page border, and we can close out of that. And what we want to do is come up here to where it says enable snapping. We want to make sure we have snap cusp node. We want that turned on. Then we'll go to view. We're going to want custom selected. You may have to go to view custom first before you, you, you'll be able to do that. So go to view, custom, and then turn on snap to cusp nodes. And then we'll zoom in at one to one. I'll open up the align and distribute menu with this button right here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down, and then I'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a circle. So I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool right here and hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I want to take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. That should be pretty good. And then I'm going to grab the stars and polygons tool, which is over here. Uh, from this toolbar up here, we want to have uh, regular polygons selected. We want six corners and rounded and randomized, both set to zero. And then I'll hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag to create a polygon like this, where we have the top and bottom edges sitting flat on the horizontal axis. We don't want it sitting like this. We want it like that with these flat edges going vertically. And once we've done that, I'll just make that red I'll grab this select tool and just click and drag this towards the middle of the circle and then just click and drag over both of those and in the align panel I'll center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis and then we can click off of that to deselect everything. So what I want to do now is grab this polygon and just hold control and shift and grab one of these arrows to scale it up or down whatever you may need to do just to adjust the size of it. I'm going to make it about I'm going to make mine about that big in relation to the circle. Because where this red polygon is, that's going to be the negative space of the infographic. And the black area here, this is where your text and your icons and all your contents are going to go. So you may want to make it small or large, depending on how much content you want to put in this infographic. For this tutorial, I'll just leave it there like that. And once we've done that, we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. I want to grab the Bezier pen now, which is over here, where you could press B on the keyboard for that. And I want to start on this bottom left corner right here, just snap the cursor onto that corner and then click to create a point there. And then hold control on your keyboard and just bring this line straight out here, going parallel with the bottom left edge of this polygon. Just hold control and bring it out like that. And go ahead and click. Then we can let go of control and just finish this shape up going around the outside like that. And what I wanna do is I wanna make that green and I want to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. And then I'll bring the opacity of that down in half as well. And what I want to do now is create another shape going right through the bottom of this right here. So I'm going to start again at the same point on this polygon, the bottom left corner. Click and hold control and bring the line straight through horizontally like that. And click. Now we can let go of control and just finish up the shape going around the outside like that. We'll go back to the select tool, hold shift on the keyboard and click on that green shape that we just created. So we have both of these shapes selected and go to path intersection. No, I'm sorry, path difference. And then with that new shape selected, I'm gonna hold shift, click on the circle and go to path intersection. So we're left with that shape right there. And I'm just gonna make that uh, green for now. And what I'll do now is I wanna duplicate this shape by hitting control D on the keyboard and I'll make that blue I'll just bring this over here. I'll click on this again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab one of these corner arrows here and just rotate this around while holding control. Rotate it around clockwise until this flat edge runs parallel with this edge right here. And then we can take this shape and just snap it into that area right there. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing to create the rest of these, uh, these remaining four shapes. So I'm going to alternate the colors. I'm going to go back to the green shape, hit control D to duplicate that. 
Click on it again to get the rotation handles. Hold control, rotate it around until the flat edge is parallel with the edge you want to snap it to of the polygon. And I'll just go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of these shapes right here. You should pretty much be able to, oops, pretty much be able to get the idea from there. And one more, take that, rotate it around, and there we go. So what we want to do now is take this polygon in the center and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I'm going to click and drag over all of these shapes and bring the opacity of it all the way up. And now we can start coloring these in individually. I'm going to click off of the graphic to deselect everything. I'm going to start with this green shape over here on the left. I'm going to make this uh, a mid shade of blue. We'll go with something like that. Then I'll take this next blue shape right here. I'll make this a lighter shade of blue, maybe something like that. Or maybe something a little more vibrant. That's pretty good. I'll take this shape. I will make this um, yellow. I'll take this one, make this orange. Just going in accordance to the design I had in the thumbnail. This is the similar to the color scheme I used for that design. I'll take this one. I will make this red. And then I'll take this one down here and I will use a violet or purple shade. Uh, maybe something like that looks pretty good. And what we want to do now is let me click off of this to deselect everything. We want to put some drop shadows to the right of these shapes right here or coming from the flat side of the shape in order to make it appear as if it's lifting off the page a little bit like these each of these segments are uh, layered above each other. So to do that I'm going to click and drag over all of these. I'm going to duplicate them by hitting control D on the keyboard. Let me come over here and make them black. And I want to turn off snap cusp nose. We want to turn that off of what we're going to do next. And over here where it says blur, I'm going to give that a little bit of a blur, maybe 1.4%. And then I'll click on this again to get the rotation handles. And I'm just going to grab this corner arrow. And I'm just going to rotate it over clockwise a little bit. Maybe something like that. Uh, maybe I'll give this a little more of a blur. I'll go with 3.3. .3. That's pretty good. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And what I want to do now is I want to grab one of these colored shapes in there. But in order to grab them, I'm going to have to click on the black shape first and then hold Alt and click on it again in order for it to grab that shape down there. And you'll know it's grabbed that shape when you look down to uh, this little stripe in the bottom left corner where it selects the color. It shows you the color of the object you have selected. And once you have that object selected, you could hit Control D to duplicate it and hold Shift and click on the black shape before it in the order of the uh, objects here and go to object, clip, and set. And I want to do the same thing right here. I want to take this blue object, hit control D to duplicate it, hold shift, click on the black object that precedes it, object, clip, set. And I'm going to go through and do this to each shape in order. Object, clip, set. Same thing with the orange piece here. And finally, control D to duplicate, object, clip, set. And what we want to do now is I want to click on this one object right here, this black object, this little drop shadow, and I want to give this a gradient. So I'm going to, under the fill tab, I'm going to click on where it says linear gradient. And I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'm going to take the black stop and put this towards the corner right here, snap it onto the corner. You might want to turn the snap to cusp nodes back on. I'm going to snap that onto the corner and then take the, the transparent stop and bring this out over here. And I'm going to go around and do the same thing. I'm going to click on this shape, give it a linear gradient, snap the black stop onto this corner and take the transparent stop and bring it out to about here. And I'll do the same thing over here. And you should pretty much get the idea. I'm going to go through and do this to each of these shapes. And once you've done that, you might want to go to each different shape and adjust the degree at which it's blurred because sometimes it doesn't, uh, like on the lighter shades here, it shows through more on the lighter shades. So you might want to increase or de decrease it in order for it to look consistent all the way around. So uh, I'll go and adjust these a little bit. I'll give this a little, little, actually that looks pretty good as it is. And over here again, I'm going to turn down the blur a little bit to make it more visible. I'll do the same thing over here. And that should pretty much do it for that segment. Well, all we have to do next is just fill in our content. So to do that is pretty self-explanatory. You just grab the uh, the text tool, 
click on the canvas till you get your blinking text and I'm going to hit 0 0.01 for the first segment. I'm going to change the font of that. Oops, grab that. I'm going to change the font of that to, wow, that's incredibly big. Okay, I'm going to change the font of that to Lado. Make that heavy, Hit apply. Grab the select tool. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to, I'm just going to generate some dummy text or lorem ipsum text. To do that, I'll go to extensions, text, and lorem ipsum. And uh, number of paragraphs, one, two, and two. Go ahead and click apply. And this is just pretty much placeholder text that you see on like a lot of stock photo sites and, and you know, website templates and stuff like that. I'm just going to hold control and shift to scale that down. Let me click and drag over both of those objects and I want to align, I want to align the left edges like that. Let me just move this down. To zoom in and out, I'm holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. To move the page, I'm pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And let me grab the text tool and I'll put this out here like that. Just press enter just to get these all on different lines. That's pretty good right there. I'll take both of these and I'll put them in here. Let me scale that down a little bit. You'll start this one right here. Make that white. And I'll just hit Control D to duplicate that. Put this over here. Control D to duplicate. Put this one over here. And obviously they're not all number one. I'm gonna go back and change them. Click off of that to deselect everything. And now I can just grab the text tool and go back and change those numbers. Make that two, make that three, four. Oops, what happened there? Okay, let's make that five and six. And I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. And that should pretty much give you an idea of how you can go about filling in the contents. You could even go and put little icons and imagery in there. And you could even put like, uh, little notes going around the outside here and pretty much do whatever do whatever you'd like with it from there so that's how you can go about creating this colorful circle infographic using inkscape again if you'd like to download a copy of this file i will have a link to that in the description of the video so uh, if you have any questions let me know and as always thanks for watching